Lawrence. Lawrence will go drop it, turn around, dunks it. Frazier, another drive and another dunk. Boy, I tell you. Stolen away. Clark with the layup and it's good. Yeah, we on the road. Bring it. Bring it. And yeah. And takes it back. Yeah. Action. Three. Don't stop. 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 Welcome to the 60th District Tournament Action here on the campus of Pike County Central High School. This is Gary, just along with Wes Hutchinson. We'll be bringing the broadcast all week, Wes, as the 60th District Action between the on the girls' side and the boys' side. Yeah, looking for, I mean, is there a better time of year? I, I defy you to find a better time of year than March Madness. Well, right, well, we're sitting over to the PA announcer right now, the Burning White, for the playing of the National Anthem. For the presentation of our nation's colors tonight, being presented by the Pike Central JROTC Color Guard, and the playing of our national anthem tonight by the Pike Central High School Band under the direction of Mr. Jason Johnson. Presenting the colors for tonight's game are Cadet Sergeant Leo McDonald, Cadet Sergeant Connor Ramey, Cadet Master Sergeant Colin Ramey, and Cadet Captain Alex Mazinski. Thank you. So we're going to give you a quick pre-game contest with the Porto, I'm sorry, pre-game preview of the ball game. You have the Phelps Lady Hornets and the Pike County Central Lady Hawks. So first of all, this game, the 60th district first round game from Pike Central. Good Pike Central Lady Hawks, Phelps Lady Hornets is a live broadcast on WPRG, WPRG.TV, also WPRG-TV, the YouTube channel, and it's a playback tomorrow on Tuesday at 4 p.m. on WPRG-TV5 and HD105 as well. Well, these two teams have met one time this year already, and that was on March the 3rd, with Pike Central coming out with a 52-20 win over Phelps, but throw that game out of the out the window 
yeah, surviving I'm, events right now. Sure, and, and we know for a fact, and if you follow sports at all, you know anything can happen in tournament time. That's a fact. So for Phelps, real quick, they led the scoring by Casey Dodson to 14 points per ball game. The team averages 32 points per ball game, so almost half of the points comes from Casey Dodson. A good thing here, Wes, they have four players averaging over six rebounds per ball game, so it's a team um, uh, philosophy of a team attack the backboard with four players averaging over six rebounds per game. In a late game situation, if it comes down to free throw, look for number 14, Kaylee McCoy. She shoots. 82% from the free throw line. The shooting splits for Phelps offensively. They shoot 27% from the floor, 14.5% from three, and 46% from the free throw line. For the Hawks, real quickly, coached by Denise Campbell. I'm sorry, and the, the Lady Hornets are coached by Devin Stilner. The Lady Hawks, coached by Denise Campbell, they led by Hannah May and Emily Tackett, averaging 10.5 points per ball game. Offensively, they shoot 34% from the floor. 20% from deep and 55% from the free throw line. They average 45 points per ball game. Hannah May leads the team with 32 made threes on the season. And Emily Tackett, she attacks the glass and then in the paint. 96 two-point buckets on the season. And Emily Tackett, almost a double-double. She averages 9.9 .9 rebounds per ball game with. Yeah, so in other words, folks, keep your eyes on number 14 for Phelps, Kaylee McCoy. We're going to do a lot of shooting tonight, I, I have a feeling. So real quick also, we just want to give a quick shout-out to our sponsors who makes this live broadcast a possible. Appalachian Wireless, Gen Jennifer Reynolds State Farm, HPT, Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, Pop Chevrolet, Total Pharmacy, Community Trust, Gerhardt Security, Remax, Frontier Medical Group, Southern Prep, Intermountain Cable, Citizens National Bank of Kentucky, Howard Family Pharmacy, Eternal Attorney John Earl Hunt, Overhead Door of Eastern Kentucky, Hutch Chevrolet, and Pikeville RV. Very appreciative, Wes, of those sponsors. Yeah, it's a big shout out to those guys. Couldn't do it without them. That's a fact. And this is an opportunity where you've been watching these student athletes comp compete. And uh, again, it's uh, one of the more enjoyable times of the year, as Wes talked to, I told you earlier, surviving events. You're going to see. Usually it's when stars are born. You come out, and this is usually, remember, the first thing and the last thing happened the season. This is a possibility of a last game for somebody this year where this is where a star is born on the hardwood. Yeah, and this is a winner-go-home situation. The winner of this game tonight is going to advance on to the 15th region. Obviously going to have to play Belfry uh, later on this week on Thursday, but this is a huge game for both of these teams and would be a giant upset if Phelps could get over the hump and get into that 15th region tournament. Well, so Phelps going to see them on the game. They're 3-11 and 11 on the season. Pikes until 8-19, however, Phelps did win their last game over June Buchanan, so they win, they're riding that winning streak coming into tonight's ball game. Again, it's not a time where you can overlook any opponent this time of year. And I'm sure Coach Denise Campbell, a veteran coach on the collegiate level and also at the high school level, is reminding her players right now in that huddle, do not overlook the, don't overlook the team in the blue. Sure, and Phelps is going to be throwing everything in the kitchen sink at Park Central tonight to try to get this win move on to the 15th region tournament. They're going to secure, if they get the win, they're going to secure their spot in that 15th region tournament. That would be a huge win and a huge way to uh, cap off the season for the Phelps so, Lady Hornets. That's a great point there. So the winner of this game tonight will advance to next week's 15th region tournament sure. held at Appalachian Wireless Arena. We'll send it back to Burnham White for a starting lineup for both teams. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the campus of Pike County Central for the 60th District Basketball Tournament brought to you by Gearheart Broadband, Pepsi-Cola, the stations of Double Quick, and Food City. Thank you for your support of the 60th District Basketball Tournament. Let's meet our starting lineups first for the Phelps Lady Hornets. Starting at forward, number three, Amelia Casey. At guard, number 14, Kelly McCoy. At guard, number 21, Ivy Lane. Center, number 22, Faith Potter. And at forward, number 15, J.C. Stanley, the Lady Hornets. Phelps is led by head coach Justin McCoy. And your Pike County Central Hawks. Starting for the Lady Hawks, at forward, number one, Emily Tackett. 
At guard, number three, Hannah May. At forward, number five, Lindsay Bowman. At guard, number 12, Allie Spears. And at guard, number 23, Abigail S. The Lady Hawks. Mike Central is led by head coach Denise Campbell. So we're ready for basketball action at Pike County Central High School, 60th District. First round girls. Winner of this game will advance to Thursday night to take on the Belfry Pirates for the 60th District Championship. As a reminder, the winner of this ball game tonight is automatically advanced to the 15th Regional Tournament next week at the Appalachian Wireless Arena. A lot on the line here tonight. A huge Sur game. Survive and advance. I mean, it just doesn't get better than tournament basketball. It really does. Uh, it, it, you can't beat it. At, uh, just on every level. College, high school, basketball in the mountains is a special thing. Truly a special time of year. This, this, this time of year. And coming off the COVID year. I mean, you know, so much got canceled last year. We're finally seeing some light at the end of the tunnel, some basketball tonight. Well, they did, they did a great job just getting through this season. Sure. To make this happen. So with no jump ball, this is going to be a coin flip. Phelps wins a coin flip. Kaylee McCoy throws the basketball inbounds for the Lady Hornets, and we're on our way. 21, Kayla Lane will dribble the basketball across half court for the Hornets. Man-to-man -man defense from Pike Central. The steal on the inside of the central ball, still loose on the floor. It's going to be a tie-up. She'll be over to Pike County Central on the alternating possession. Looks like Phelps was going to attack that man-to-man -man defense with a little backdoor cut. But Pike Central did a good job defensively getting the hands on the basketball. Yeah, setting some screens up top. Got to snap those passes in there. Abigail Hess has the basketball for the Pike County Central Hawks. A little full-court press from the horn as Hess breaks it. Gets all the way down to the paint. Left-handed glass up off the glass and good. Now Pike County Central has come out going to press. Full-court man-to-man. Still by the... Hawks, that's number one, Emily Tackett. Shots up, no good, but she's fouled. She should be going to line shooting two shots. Park Central looking to come out and pressure the Phelps Lady Hornets right off the bat. Tackett will be shooting two shots. The junior, first shots up and good. We have one more, three nothing Pike County Central quickly. Second shot's good as well. Tack it again, almost averaging a double double. Pike Central gets another steal. Shots up off the back side of the rim. Rebound by number 20. It's Lane, number 21. Hess has the basketball, gets to the baseline. Pass over, shots up, back of the rim, no good. Rebound by scramble on the floor. Pike County Central is going to come up with it. Traveling violation. Basketball goal right over to Phelps. Yeah, it's going to Phelps going to have a tough time getting this ball up the court with uh, the Pike County Central Lady Hawks pressing like this. They got to really try to figure out how to break this press. Nice job of Lindsey Bowman in there for the Hawks. Get her hands on the basketball, unable to secure it though. A walk call, another steal by Pike County Central. Shots up off the rim, that's good. It's number three, Hannah May. In the game averaging 10 and a half points per ball game. Hawks leading this one six nothing. Again, full court press to pair, uh, press man to man. That's Lane with the basketball for the Hornets. Gets all the way down the rim. Ball is stolen. Two out of control there. Hannah May, shot goes up, no good, foul at the paint. She'll go to the line shooting two shots. Emily Casey called for the foul. We'll have a technical, technical foul as well. Call number three for Phyllis Casey. That's her second personal foul, team seconds. 
So Casey's called for a second personal foul, then also called for a technical foul, which will be her third personal foul. So that's going to send, I think it says May versus Bowman. That is May at the line. Okay, I couldn't I, see if it was a three or five. It's May, so. I didn't see what they got Casey for the technical for. May first free throw rattles around and goes in. Shooters roll. She must have said something to the official walking off the floor. That's a big blow. You know, a minute and a half into the ball game and three personal fouls on one of your starters. Three quick on the board for uh, Amalia Casey. So now May will shoot the technical free throws. Seven nothing Pike County Central. May's first technical free throw is up and good. Make it eight nothing. And May will have one more. Shots up and it's good. Nine nothing Pike County Central. And now Pike County Central will inbounds the basketball from the side. What? It should be Pike County Central basketball sure. after technical foul, I would yeah. think. It is. So May will throw it inbounds, get inside the Hess, look for Hess in the back court. No, she's looking for the front court. Gets in to tack it. Tack it over to May. Three corner out three pointer out of the corner. Rattles around. Nice rebound there by JC Stanley. The ball's gonna be stolen, but May's on the end on the out of bounds line, turn over to Pike County, I mean, I'm sorry, to Phelps, excuse me. That Pike Central press is just giving Phelps fits early on this ball game. Now a three-quarter press here from Pike County Central. Lane kind of surveying. Got to get to work. Gets across half court. This might be caught on Bowman. It is. It'll be her first, team's first. Nine-nothing Pike County Central. Not even two minutes into the ball game yet. We've got a player in foul trouble this early. <laughs> early on to be in foul trouble. Lane is pointing, wanting her teammates to move. Gets all the way to the baseline. Foul on Pike County Central. He tack it be her first team second. And Lane will inbounds the basketball from the Horners from the baseline. Shots up for Phelps, rattles around the back of the rim, no good. Rebound by Tackett, she gets 10 of those a game. Nine nothing, Pike County Central. They're going to push, gets over to Hess in the corner. Puts down a couple of dribbles, look back over to May. Looking, looking for Spears, Phelps going to a zone defense. Over to Bowman. Back to May, her layup is good. Good pass. 11 nothing, Pike County Central. It's all Hannah May for the Pike Central Hawks early on. 1-3-1, three, one, three-quarter press here from Pike County Central. Lane over to McCoy, back to Lane. Passes it down, stolen by Abigail Hess. She's going to push. Gets all the way to the rim. Leaves it for two ideas. I'm sorry, that's going to be Spears. We have foul on something. It's on McCoy. 11 up in Pike County Central. Gets over to May. Had to shop in the corner, decided to get inside the paint. Bowman shots up no good. May with the rebound. She goes back up. 13 nothing. Hannah May's come to play. Yeah, it's all Hannah May tonight. <laughs> Hannah May with nine of the team's 13 early on. Phelps is going to push. Pike County Central continues to press. Emily Tack with the steal. Her layup is good. 15 nothing. Pike County Central. And Coach McCoy says, give me a timeout, be a full timeout. You're watching 60th District Basketball Action on WPRG, the Intermountain Sports Network. Hello, Bob Hutchison here with Hutch Chevy Buick GMC in Paintsville, Kentucky. This month, spring has sprung. Save up to $8,000 off the new Buick Envision and take $3,000 off the new 2021 Equinox. Plus, get 0% financing for up to 72 months. And it all comes with our spring guarantee. You'll never pay too much when you buy from Hutch. Hutch 
Well, spring is here with warmer temperatures and sunshine. Now that means let's go camping. Pikeville RV has new campers arriving daily and they've added two new lines, new Cherokee travel trailers and east-west campers. Whether you're looking for a drivable, fifth wheel, toy hauler, travel trailer or pop-ups, Pikeville RV is the place to shop. Remember, they have a great selection of pre-owned campers that qualify for buy here, pay here. It's time to go camping. Welcome back to Pike County Central High School. 4.47 to go here in the first quarter. All Pike County Central, 15 to nothing. Yeah, and this, this three-quarter court press just giving Phelps all kinds of problems here in the early going. Lane over to McCoy, back to Lane. She tries to stay out of the trap, gets back to McCoy. Nice patient from the Phelps offense. Hess with the steal, and then she steps on the sideline. Tell you what, Abigail Hess... Ball hawk out there. He's a ball hawk. Absolutely. She's all over the place tonight. I think it's three steals already. We haven't even played four minutes yet. Gets inside the lane. Lane's going to try to get to the free throw line. Passes to a teammate. A little miscommunication. Ball goes out of bounds. And Phelps is yet to crack the scoreboard yet. Had a tough time just getting it past mid-court right now. This this Pike Central defense has been stifling so far. So Casey, the sophomore center for Phelps, picked up three quick fouls here in the first period. I say she'll be riding the pine for a while. Protects against foul trouble. Hess out of the corner, three-pointer. Shots up off the side of the rim. Rebound Phelps. That's McCoy with the rebound. She's going to push. Spears trying to stop her. She does. Turnover. No, the ball's still on the floor. We're going to have a jump ball, and that'll be the Phelps. Corners with the basketball. It's number five, Lindsey Bowman, the 5'10", eighth grader. Yeah, and I think Kaylee McCoy had the right idea of pushing the ball up the court there. She's got a little bit out of control and lost it. Got Sarah Justice checking in, along with Alexis Taylor for the Hawks. Lane will inbound from the baseline. Gets inside to McCoy, back over. I'm sorry, it's McCoy. Three-point shots up front of the rim, rebound, that's May. She's gonna push, unable to control the basketball, nice hustle, but the ball falls, hits the end, I'm sorry, the end line, turn over to Pike County Central. I think both teams got a little bit of nerves going on here in the early going. Also, uh, Lakota Johnson in the ball game for Pike County Central. So Phelps is having a hard time with this press. Oh, man, a little late on the pass. If I get your number on, that was number 22. That is Alexis Taylor with a basket, the 5'9 junior. Just checked in, got two steals. And shots up off the rim. Hannah May, her rebound, her shot's up no good. Rebound Phelps. She's going to be called for the travel. We do not have a 22 on our roster. I'm sorry for Phelps. No, I don't. No 22. Inbound to May from the corner, three-pointer up, good. That's 20 to nothing, Pike County Central. Hannah May show so far. 12 points for Hannah May. She likes that little corner three. McCoy's going to push for the Phelps Hornets. will be out of bounds. Phelps will retain possession. Yep. May coming into the game, averaging 10 and a half points per ball game. She's already got 12. Yeah, Phelps needs to see one go in right here, get that confidence up. you got to get the ball to number 14 right here and let her put one up. Only one shot so far in the game for Kaylee. Uh, Alexis Stalin with another steal over to Hannah May. Her layup is good, 22 nothing. Pike County Central. And Bailey Norman will check in. The seventh grade for Phelps will check in next dead ball. Gets inside to McCoy. She tries to get down to the sideline. Stolen by the Lady Hawks. It's Abigail Hess again. May over to Hess. I think it's McCoy. No, that's going to be 51. That's going to be Stanley. See, her first team's fifth. So Norman will check in. And then Spears will return for the Lady Hawks. Replacing Hannah May. I think it's a well-deserved rest. Yeah, for sure. She, she has done it all for the Hawks this uh, early going. 
That's number 15, shots up and good. That's Sarah Justice, the 5'7 junior with a basket. Reserves coming in, making an impact right away for the Hawks. 24 nothing. Shots up and no good. Rattles around. Rebound Pike County Central. Lakota Johnson over to Hess. Shots up. Three point off the front of the rim. Taylor with a rebound and a basket. Count it. 26 to nothing. Pike County Central. Alexis Taylor giving them some juice off the bench, coming in and getting her second bucket and one on that one. I tell you what, Taylor's look kind of earned some more minutes. Yeah. Doing a good job here tonight in early going. Bends the knees. Nice looking free throw. It's 27 nothing here in the first quarter. Stanley will return along with Kylie McCoy, a freshman for Phelps. And Pike County Central is going to back off and just play half court defense right now. Yeah, Phelps needing a bucket in the worst possible way right here. Lane bring the basketball across half court. Man to man defense for Pike County Central. Gets over to Stanley. Stanley working against uh, Taylor. Left handed dribble. Trying to get back to Lane. She does. Looking for Norman, but she's going to be fouled. Says when Spears. Yes. Stanley with the good idea there, driving the basket. I mean, Phelps needs to do a little bit more of that. Had a cut there. Norman was trying to cut back door there before yeah. the, the foul was committed. Lane was trying to inbounds the basketball for Phelps. Gets it inside. He's going to have a tie between Stanley and you guess who, Abigail Hess. I mean, I'm going to tell you what, this is, this girl's working on a double-double in the first, first half of the game here. <laughs> You don't typically see a double-double with steals, but no. Abigail Hess is well on that way. 27-0 Pike County Central with 1.50 to go here in the first period. Gets over to Spears, looking for Taylor on the inside. Hess. Lakota Johnson, drive to the basket, layup no good. Taylor with another rebound. Goes up and she gets fouled. She'll go to the line shooting two more shots. Yeah, really good ball movement by the Lady Hawks on that possession. J.C. Stanley with the foul. Her first team, I'm sorry, her second team seventh. So Pike County Central will be shooting the bonus the rest of the way in the first half. Taylor's first shot's up, 28-0 Pike County Central. Six points for Alexis Stanley off the bench, or Alexis Taylor, I'm sorry. She had a couple of steals. Bends the knees. Good looking free yeah. throw. She's three of three from the free throw line, I believe. Nice looking shot. 29-0 Pike County Central with 1.30 to go here in the first period of play. Lane will be bringing the ball down the fort for the Hornets. Man-to-man -man defense for the Hawks. Lane gets to the to the bucket. I believe this might be on 15 Sarah Justice. It is. Be her first team's fourth. Phelps getting closer to the bonus anyway. 29 nothing here with 126 to go. Gets inside the Stanley being guarded by Hess. She puts down a couple of dribbles. Look out. And Hess with another steal, and she's going to get all the way to the bucket. Right-handed layup is up and good. 31 nothing. Pike County Central. 4.7 steals for Hess. Man. Early going. She's all over it. Lane brings the basketball down for the Hornets. Gets over to McCoy. She's working against Spears. McCoy's three-point shot's up. Front of the rim, no good. Battle for the rebound. I think it's Spears will be coming out with it. I'm sorry, that's number 32. That is Lakota Johnson. She gets over to Hess. Gets over to Spears in the corner. Over to Johnson, back to Hess, three more on the corner. Shots in front of the rim, no good. Rebound, battle four. Spears comes out for the Pike County Central Lady Hawks. Johnson may go away with a walk. Layup, no good. Rebound, battle four. Stanley's battling for it, but the Haw Lady Hawks laying on the, standing on the end line. Yeah, and, and the Lady Hawks just dominating every aspect of this game, all over the offensive boards, all over the defensive boards. It cannot get any, I mean, this Abigail Hess. Unbelievable, unbelievable so far. Bowman will return for the Lady Hawks, replacing Spears, and Casey will return for 
the Hornets. I'm sure you Coach McCoy saying, hey, we're down 31-0. We need you in the ball game yeah, right now. Take it easy. Take so, it easy. So we're down to 20 seconds going in the first period of play. The Hornets may be looking for the final shot. Lane dribbling against the, the trap, stolen there by and it's Bowman with the steal. Five on the game clock, gets over to Hess. Hess thought about the three, stepped in the free throw line jumper, rattles around, battled for the rebound, comes away to that's Casey with the rebound. However, as the final horn blows here in the first period, 31-0 Pike County Central Hawks. You're watching the 60th District Tournament on the Intermountain Sports Network. Experiencing pain or an injury is part of life. Whether it's chronic aches and pains, athletic injuries, or recovering from a surgery, HPT Physical Therapy is here to help you return to your normal activities safely and as quickly as possible. We've been serving the community of Eastern Kentucky for more than 20 years and have convenient locations in Pikeville, Prestonsburg, and Paintsville, Kentucky. Check us out at hptphysicaltherapy.com. You have the choice of where to go for physical therapy. Choose the best. Choose HPT Physical Therapy. Hey y'all, so today me and Maddie decided to bring Connor and our girls day to Southern Prep. We started off with Odro Tees and me and Maddie moved to our favorite brand, Thread and Supply. Me and Maddie picked out our favorite polo from Honored Reserve. Next was Southern Marsh and his favorite, the normal brand. Y'all stop by and see Corey at Southern Prep for the cutest outfits all year round. Welcome back to Pike County Central High School. 31 nothing after one period of play. Pike County Central leading the Lady Hornets in West. That first period, it was the Hannah May and the Abigail Hess show. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this Pike Central Lady Hawks team just all over the place on defense. Uh, Abigail Hess, an absolute ball hawk. We talked about it right off the bat. I think she had two steals inside of the first minute. She had an unbelievable game, and only an eighth grader, uh, Abigail Hess. So this, this girl's got some huge potential down there for the Lady Hawks, but th th things not going well so far for the Phelps Lady Hornets. You hope they'll be able to turn it around here in the second quarter. And Hannah May, only a sophomore. Yeah. Young, young backcourt for the Lady Hawks. Sure. So Phelps will get the first possession here in the second quarter play. McCoy will throw the basketball in bounds for the Lady Hornets. And we'll get it into lane. Looks like Pike County Central may be running a 2-3 zone now. They may expand the zone a little bit. McCoy surveying the defense. will try to adjust her play back over to lane. She puts down a couple of dribbles. She works to the middle. Gets over to Casey. There she is. No, that's Hannah May with a yeah. steal. Pass over, stolen by the Hawks. No Spears comes up with it. Shots up, no good. It'll be a walking violation against Emily Tackett. I think the uh, Phelps Lady Hornets need to try to set some ball screens for Kaylee McCoy, get her some open looks. I mean, th that's her. That's the bread and butter for this Lady Hornets team so far this season. Another steal for Pike County Central. That's Johnson on the steal. She gets all the way to the bucket. Side steps, Kate, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Lane at the bucket. Missed a shot. Pike County Central gets a rebound. Now Hannah May come out working against a 2-3 defense for Phelps. Mays wanted to survey the defense and run a different play. Johnson, they caught her that time. I think it may be the second time. She may go got away with one earlier, Wes, in that first period. Yeah, and Phelps almost daring Pike Central to shoot, not letting them, clogging up that lane, not letting them get to the basket. Official timeout on that Pike County Central bench. May look like they had a, a water spill. Coach Misty Haynes getting everything cleaned up 31 nothing seven to pike county central seven minutes to go here in the second period mccoy's got the basketball working is now against a man-to-man -man defense tries to get a delay throws overhead out of bounds be pike county central basketball number five bailey norman the seventh grader will check in for the hornets and she'll replace Haley McCoy. McCoy. May gets it over to Spears. Back to May, working as a zone defense. Johnson, the basketball back to May. Very patient on offense. Tackett working the baseline, stolen by Norman. 
Gets over the lane, back tip there by Bowman. Gets it back over to Emily Tackett. She's going to attack the glass. Lay is up, no good. Rebound by Lane. Bowman with a man-to-man -man defense, full court pressure. Now she's going to back off. 31-0 Pike County Central. Pretty good defensive possession there for the Lady Hornets. Gets it over to Casey, and that ball stolen by Johnson. She gets over to Hannah May, and Hannah May wants to slow things down. Let's run some offense. Yeah, Phelps really clogging up that middle. Now they extend that zone out a little bit. May breaks the press, gets the spears. Her three-point shot is blocked the other corner. Johnson comes up with it, backs it back out. Back to May. Spears has it in the corner. Back to May. Works into Tackett. Nice looking play. Tackett slips. No good off the front of the rim. Out of bounds over to Phelps. She turns around and goes up with that. She's got a wide open bucket. I think she may have taken an extra dribble on that one. And also, I also didn't mean to interrupt you there, Wes. I thought she may have anticipated somebody else being there sure. as well. She didn't expect to be that wide open. So you have Lane with the basketball. Casey back door. It gets to the Casey. Her shot is blocked. However, it might be on Emily Tackett. It is. Be her first team's fifth. Her second, excuse me. That's going to send Casey to the free throw line. Get Phelps on the board right here. First shot's up off the back of the rim. 31 nothing. 5.23 to go here in the second period. Both teams come out cold here in the second quarter. Park Central not able to get much going early on here. Tackett goes high for the rebound. 31 nothing. May working against Norman. Phelps staying in that zone. They are extending it, West, like you talked about last time. Tackett's got in the corner. Gets it back over to Hannah May. Leaving a lot of room in the middle, though. Yeah, Pike Simpson's got to attack it here. I know the score is kind of lopsided right now, but they got to work on their offense, get prepared for a district championship. Gets inside to Bowman. A couple moves. It's blocked on the inside. We have a jump ball, and they'll stay with Pike County Central. We got a number for 22 in blue, did we? I did not get a name for 22. No, we don't have it. Our apologies there, folks. Spears gets in the basketball into May out of the corner. Three-point shots up off the front of the rim. Bowman comes crashing in for Pike County Central. Bangs against Spears. Hopefully she's okay. That's two teammates going against each other for that rebound. Uh, that's Johnson, I'm, excuse me. Johnson's looking at Bowman and said, hey, that's, that's friendly <laughs> yeah. fire. Come on. 31 nothing. Pike County Central, 440 to go here in the second period. Kaylee McCoy will check back in for the Hornets in the next dead ball. Lane has the basketball on the on the wing. Picks up a dribble, gets over to Casey. Being guarded by Bowman. Helps it Lane, picks up the tip pass. May is guarding Lane there. Lane was tempting her to come a little bit further out, trying to beat her off the dribble. Gets over to Casey. Three-point line. Gets inside the lane. Her shot's blocked inside by the Lady Hogs, Tackett streaking down the floor. Ryan laid up his good, count it. Lee Tackett, and one. Beyond Norman. Six points for Emily Tackett. Going for seven here. So it makes it 33 nothing. She will line shooting one shot. Hess will return for the Hawks. So got a couple more substitution for Pike County Central as well. 15. Sarah Justice checks back in and Taylor checks back in for the Lady Hawks. 33 nothing. Tackle have one shot. Her shot's up, rattles around, stays in. 34 nothing. Good job from the free throw line so far tonight by the Lady Hawks. Hawks win the 2 3 zone. Lane gets over to McCoy. McCoy back to Lane. Looks inside to Stanley. Stanley gets over to Norman. Norman back to Lane. Puts down a couple of dribbles. Gets over to McCoy. Good back ball to, movement. Back to Lane. Not a lot of spacing, though, on good no. ball movement. Jump ball, and the ball goes over to Pike County Central. Almost like they didn't know what to do with it there. 
Yeah, Pike County Central will switch them defense most times down. Sometimes they'll go to a zone, sure. to a man. I wonder if maybe confusing Phelps, causing the turnover. 34 nothing, Pike County Central here in the second period. Tack in the corner. Tries to find May, and it'll be an over and back violation. And Phelps will have the basketball in the turnover. Phelps still looking to get on the board here. Got their leading scorer back in the game, number 14, uh, Kaylee McCoy. Got to think she's going to get on the board sooner or later. Gets over to Lane, surveying the defense, 2-3 defense. You see Abigail Hess up top here. She's anticipating another steal, the eighth grader. Shots up for Norman, three-point shot, doesn't find rim. Gets over to Taylor, back to Hannah Maiden, and she's going to attack. Stops, pops, no good. Tackett battles for Hawks. She gets it, goes up strong, Ooh. finishes 36 nothing. Pike County Central, and she'll go to the line shooting one shot. That's three offensive rebounds for Emily Tackett and her second and one. And that's Casey's fourth foul here in the first period, for a first half, excuse me. Yeah, those, those three early on are, are you knew they were going to come back to haunt her in the, in the later on in the game here. Number 10, Caden Hess will check in for Pike County Central. Along with number 42, Abby May, an eighth grader, she's going to be checking in. Got the officials coming together. It's 36 nothing. I think this might be a discussion about a running clock in Kentucky High School basketball typically you get to a certain lead. They're going to the line, shooting one shot. This is Emily Tackett. Her shot's up and good, makes it 37 nothing. And now May will check in. It's Abby May. She'll check in for Emily Tackett. It's 10 points for Emily Tackett. It was the uh, Hannah May show in the first quarter. It's been the Emily Tackett show here in the second quarter. That's Tackett's average season average of 10 and a half. She got 10 here in the first half. 37 nothing Pike County Central. Gets it over to McCoy. Over back over to Lane. Got a collision on the baseline. It's going on number 15, Sarah Justice. Her second team sixth. So Phelps will inbounds the basketball from the baseline. Lane gets it into McCoy. Puts on a couple of dribbles, get back over to Lane. That's going to be on Caden Hess. Be her first team seventh. That's going to send the Lady Hornets to the free throw line, shooting the bonus risk the first half, Wes. Yeah, big chance for the uh, Lady Hornets to get on the board here. McCoy, they need it. McCoy is 82% on the season from the free throw line. First shot back of the rim rattles out. Nice rebound there by Abby May. She gets over to Abigail Hess, whips it into Taylor, left hand to move off the glass, no good. Rebound Pike County Central, it rattles around, no good. Abby May battling in there. She gets it back out to number 10. Her layup is no good, and that is Caden Hess, and the Lady Hornets come away with it. Lane gets over to McCoy. Gets it back at the lane. Back to McCoy. Zone defense from Pike County Central. Phelps got to learn to attack that zone. You know, Phelps, they really worked that one side of the floor yeah. predominantly. They may need to swing that basketball a bit more this other side. Back over to Lane. To Stanley. Her baseline jumper rattles around, falls out. Taylor with another rebound. She's had a nice first half here, Wes, off the bench for the Lady Hawks. Yeah, really giving them a boost, done a great job on the board. Abigail Hess, her layup was no good. Abby May's layup was no good. Rebound uh, Stanley from Phelps. They're going to call a jump ball, and the Lady Hornets will keep possession. 37 nothing. The Lady Hawks getting, getting what they want at the basket, just not able to put it in here in the last few minutes of this second quarter. I was unable to catch that name as number 22 checked in for Phelps. Vernon White spoke a little bit too quickly for me. McCoy had the basketball. Her three-point shot battled back of the rim. Abby May with another rebound for Lady Hawks. It's over to Abigail Hess. 
Abigail Hess, Hess's dad, Paul Hess, he could really shoot the basketball back in his day at Fed's Creek. Shots up, no good. Rebound by McCoy. Gets it over to Lane, who pushes. McCoy looks inside. Over to Norman. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Now they're starting to snap those passes around. Good job ball, moving the ball. Lane puts down a couple dribbles, get on that right side. Gets it inside, shots up, no good. Rebound by Stanley, her shots up, there's not a fall, but I think it's gonna get it on Taylor. Her first team's eighth. That's going to send Stanley to the line shooting two shots. Chance to get on the board before halftime for the Lady Hornets. First shot falls off the front of the rim. She'll have one more. 39.8 seconds to go here in the first half. 37 nothing. Pike County Central leading this one. Stanley's second shot. Rattles round, falls through, 37 to one. Pike County Central Phelps breaks the glass. Taylor has the basketball for Pike County Central on the side. Give it to Hess, her three point shots up off the back of the rim, rebound by Stanley. Gets over to Lane, 20 seconds to go here in the first half. Tell you what, Hess is not shy to pull the trigger on that three, is she? No, she She'll take it if she's open. Lane over to McCoy. Gets it back to Lane with 10 on the game clock. He's going to call a foul on Abby May. And now send Lane to the free throw line. Uh, number 42 for the Lady Hawks. May, that's her first. Be May's first team's ninth, so Lane will shoot the one and the bonus. Bonus. First shot's up. Uh, that one will fall through for Lane. She'll have one more 37 to two. Second free throw is up. Back to the rim, rebound by Abigail Hiss is gonna push. Got seven on the shot coming on the game clock. Over to Taylor, nice looking play. Left hand layup, no good. Number 15 to Sarah Justin with a follow up. Her bucket counts is 39 to two at halftime of the 60th district basketball tournament. You're watching on the Intermountain Sports Network. Well, we're going to keep it here with us, folks. So we're at halftime, 39-2. We'll give Wes an opportunity to go through some, to figure up our halftime stats real quick. Let's go ahead and recognize our sponsors once again. So we'll let Wes have an opportunity to get some halftime stats for us real quick. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearheart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add plume adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. Any home can be improved with better Wi Fi. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers Plume Wi Fi, a reliable signal throughout your home. 
enhanced by mobile app features. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to learn more. Smart devices make our lives better, but they're also susceptible to hackers. That's why Plume helps identify when a device is acting strange. You mean like talking to itself for no reason? I'm talking to the audience. Welcome back to Pike County Central High School. We're at halftime here, 39 to two. Pike County Central, Lady Hawks leading the Phelps. Hornets 39-2 at halftime. Real quick, let's recognize our sponsors, Appalachian Wireless, Jennifer Rental, State Farm, HT, HPT, Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, Pop, Chevrolet, Total Pharmacy, Community Trust Bank, Gerhard Security, Remax, Frontier Medical Group, Southern Prep, Intermountain Cable, Citizens National Bank of Kentucky, Howard Family Pharmacy, Attorney John Earl Hunt, Overhead Door of East Kentucky, Hub Chevrolet, and Pikeville RV. And, and Wes, we started this, this game started off, Pike County Central come out, Coach Campbell, for Pike County Central come out and put a full court press on Phil. Got him rattled early, and Pike County Central has not looked back. Yeah, it's been all Pike Central here in the first half. Out rebounding, out play, just out playing the uh, Phelps Lady Hornets. Uh, Pike Central all over the offensive and defensive glass, out rebounding Phelps 26 to nine. Uh, nine offensive rebounds for the Pike Central Lady Hawks tonight. And it's really, Tell of two quarters. It was Hannah May for the Pike Central Hawks in the uh, first quarter. Emily Tackett for the Hawks in the second quarter. 14 at halftime for Hannah May. 10 for Emily Tackett. 4 for Abigail Hess, who was just huge, like we said, in the, in, in the first quarter. Just a ball hawk out there on defense. Uh, 7 for Alexis Taylor, who was a huge spark off the bench for Pike Central. Played well. And 3 for uh, Sarah Justice. As of right now, Ivy Lane with one point and JT Stanley with one point for Phelps. The only things they have on the board, but you got to think, coach is telling these girls they got to come out, they got to play hard. I mean, this is a huge deficit. They're obviously behind the eight ball here, but what can you do? You just got to come out and you got to play hard here in the second half. Well, Wes, we noticed on Phelps offensively in the first half, everything was kind of dominated on the right side of the floor. Sure. Pike County Central really started shaping their defense that way really play in the passing lanes, and that's where Abigail Hess was able to get that passing lane, get the steal, get some layups, or to the Panama Bay for layups in that first period. And then also Pike County Central defensively started switching up their defense as well, too. They go man-to-man -man to switch up the zone defense. Phelps looked a little confused there by the switching defenses. Yeah, and we saw Phelps get a couple of wide open shots here on the left side of the court when they did work it over there. It's just that Pike Central defense is just so smothering and they knew Phelps was tending to stay on the right side of the court. So like you said, they shaded their defense over there and were really able to just shut the Lady Hornets down. Well, there's something here, Wes, going into the second half of the 39-2 lead. Pike County Central definitely got to keep on working on their offense and defense because they'll have a district championship game potentially on Thursday night against Belfry. And then also then it is survive and advance as well too because this is the game. That now the next time Pike County Central outside the district championship. They at least should lose the game. The season's over. Now they got to keep on working their offense. You know, when Phelps went to a zone defense, Pike County Central looked at I me, mean, I'm sorry, zone defense. Pike County Central looked a little confused. That's something I, in this second half. Look for Coach Denise Campbell, again, a very veteran coach, to try to run that zone offense a little bit, preparing for Belfry on Thursday night. That's correct. And I think only eight points in the second quarter. I believe they had 31 at the end of one. So Pike Central was kind of getting what they wanted in that first quarter. Then the second quarter, we saw them change defenses. They had a little bit more of a hard time. You know, the word that comes on mind, though, Wes, is it really has become stagnant. You can't yeah. become stagnant offensively. You have a, a large lead, but you got to keep playing because you become stagnant, and that carries over into Thursday night when it's Belfry. And you definitely got to keep on, you know, just playing as hard as you can and, and being as crisp as you can as well. Well, and there's still lots of basketball to play. I mean, you've seen, we've seen plenty of times teams come back from deficits that at halftime seemed in, insurmountable, and then they end up two minutes left in the game, and there it comes down to a one possession game. Now, we don't know if that'll happen here, but you got to think if you're the Lady Hawks, you just got to come out here and start getting after it and start chipping away at this lead. And so Casey picked up those four fouls in the first half and for Phelps, the starting center. So she's got to play a little bit more 
cautious here in the second half too, so you don't pick up that fifth foul and be disqualified from the game. Well, and we saw that have a huge effect on the offensive and the defensive rebounds for Park Central just controlled the boards. And I mean, that she picked up those three fouls in the first half, had to sit out most of the first half, and Park Central really controlled the uh, offensive and defensive glass. Well, I tell you what, we're about three minutes ago in this halftime, 39 to 2 at the half, Pike County Central over the Phelps. Lady Hornets was in the back of the station. You're watching the 60th District Basketball Tournament on the Intermountain Sports Network. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution. Encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. This changes everything. Gearheart TV is available now. It's the digital TV service delivered to your smart TV or connected devices by Gearheart Broadband. Sign up now at mygtv.com. Gearheart Broadband gets solutions for your small business right. Fiber connects you to the cloud with speeds up to one gig with digital voice, the right video solutions, and local support. Make the right call. Gearheart Broadband. Welcome back to Pike County Central High School. We're at halftime, 39-2. Pike County Central Lady Hawks over the Phelps Lady Hornets. And Wes was talking about off air there. It may be a change of the side of the court here where Phelps could come down and really get into an offensive flow. And if they can come and get an early basket, get some confidence going, yeah, we can't tell what will happen. Yeah, and, and Pike Central just kind of knew what Phelps was going to do every time up the court. They just tended to stay on that side of the court and really work the ball only on that side of the court, which was leaving this left side of the court wide open. So if they can, they can work that side, work a little offense over there, there's gonna, they're going to find some wide open shots. And so for Pike County Central, I'm sure Coach Campbell and Randy Hoskins, the one assistant coach, and Misty Haynes, is reminding their team, hey, we're preparing for a postseason run. Don't come out and say, well, this ball game is won. Let's continue running offense. Keep on playing defense. Get on the backboard when you can. Get those rebounds. And I thought, you know, Emily Tackett got off a little bit of a slower start for the Hawks in this ball game. She came out with 10 points in that second half. Hannah May came out strong in that first quarter. Didn't score as much in that second quarter. Uh, Abigail Hess was kind of all over the place in both quarters, so I mean, he's got more steals, got a few couple buckets as well too. But I'm sure Coach Campbell's going to be looking for more people. Got a good, got a good uh, boost off the bench by Taylor in that first half as well too. But they're going to continue to be building for his postseason run. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for this Pike Central team to not only you know keep their foot on the gas, but work on some of these things that they need to work on before they go and play the Belfry Lady Pirates and into the uh, 50 region tournament starting next week. So this is a great opportunity for uh, have a bunch of coachable moments here. You got a whole second half to do that. I just now noticed something there. There's a young lady on crutches there for Phelps. And that is Casey Dotson. She averages 14 points per ball game. Maybe that's some of the reason for the offensive struggle tonight. Mary West, I just now picked that up as she's coming out. You know, they averaged 32 as a ball as a ball club, and she averaged 14. You have half of your offense sitting on the bench over there on crutches. Yeah, and we knew Kaylee McCoy coming in was a big part of that offense yes. too. So I mean, if you've got half of your, almost half of your points sitting on the bench, it's going to be a, you're going to have a tough time. So Pike County Central will get the basketball first here in the second half. May will get inside the Hess, and here we go, 39 to two, Pike County Central here in the third quarter. Three two defense here from from Phelps. Pass over to Spears, tries to get back over to May. Phelps is staying out of his own defense. May puts in a couple of dribbles. Now let's run an offense here. I'm sure Coach Campbell wants to see their zone offense. May over to Spears. Gets back to Hess. May to Tackett. Bowman's baseline jumper side of the rim. Rebound by McCoy. She's going to push for Phelps. Gets the middle of the floor. Zone defense firm. Pike County Central gets over to Lane. Back to McCoy. 
She's looking, goes over to Stanley. Fakes the pass, May anticipated that pass and played the passing lane. McCoy, stolen by Bowman. She gets it quickly out to Hess. Hess is going to push, the eighth grader. Puts down a couple of dribbles, gets back over to Hannah May. The floor general beats the Bowman to tack it. She's going to tack the rim. The ball is knocked away. Hess from the corner. Oh, she could back tack it. Nice looking pass. Good. Nice looking play. Tack it up the glass. Good. 41 2. Really good looking pass there by Abigail Hess. You got to love this young player out there. Number 23. Great game so far. McCoy gets over to Stanley. Again, zone defense from the Hawks. Goes over to Lane. As Lane gets over to side. This is the dot. I it's Casey. I'm sorry. Her running jumper is no good. Battle for the rebound. Hess comes out up there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hess is passed for May. Nice hustle over to Emily Tackett. Her layup is off the glass. Good, 43-2. Nice hustle from Hess, from May, and then Tackett gets the bucket. Yeah, really getting after that and making that bucket happen. That ball was going out of bounds. She really did a good job getting back and saving that. Casey's three from the side, off the side of the rim. Bowman goes high for the rebound, gets over to Hannah May. She's going to push. Gets all the way to the rim, right-handed layup off the glass. No good. Gets it over to Bowman. Bowman back to Hess. She's going to attack the paint. Gets all the way to the rim. Her floater's blocked in there. Spears shot from the corner. Side of the rim. Rebound Phelps and attack it. They're going to battle for it and go over to Phelps High School. Let's say this, though, Wes. I know it's a 43-2 ball game right now. However, Phelps is still playing hard. Yeah, Phelps is out here fighting right now. I mean, they're they're not they're not out there, you know, being lackadaisical. They're really trying to get their offense going and really fighting hard on the defensive side of the ball. Gets over to Casey. Casey gets him to Lane. Lane's going to battle. Shots up and good. 43-4 Pike County Central with the lead. May comes down. This is the first field goal for Phelps on the on the evening. Bowman inside the Tackett. Tackett looking around, gets it back to May. Her three-point shots up front of the rim. Rebound, new battle four in there. Emily Tackett with another rebound. Spears, Spears gets it back over to Hess. May, May's three-point shots up good, 46 to four. May leads this team with three-point makes on the season. She adds another one. That's her first field goal here since the first quarter. Wholesale substitution coming in for the Lady Hawks. The next dead ball. McCoy gets to the free throw line. Jumper not the back of the rim. Shots up. Battled for. Tackett comes out for the, for the Lady Hawks. She's going to lead the break. Gets all the way to the rim. Tripped up. Going to be a blocking violation. Going to be on lane. Tackett should be going to the line shooting two shots. Now, Pike Central came out here in the first couple of possessions looking like they're trying to get that offense going, run some plays out there, and we've turned right back into a track meet here in the last few possessions. Lane was her first team's first. Tackle shoot two shots. First shot short. So four of the subs will check in. We'll try to get those for you real quick, guys. Tommy Allen, number 25. Number 15 is Sarah Justice. 32 is Johnson. Tackett second free throws up and rattles in. Number 10, Caden Hess. And number 22, Taylor will check it back in. That's 14 on the night for Emily Tackett. Well-deserved rest going over to the bench. 47 to four with four minutes and 30 seconds going in the third quarter. Pike County Central in control of this one over to Casey. Back to McCoy to Lane. The zone defense from the Hawks. Casey's shot back to the rim. Rebound by the Hawks. We'll get it over to Johnson, who's going to push. Gets it over to Hess. Back to Johnson. Back to Hess. Over to Allen. Back to Johnson. Justice. Good pass. Taylor. Shots up. No good. Falls out of bounds, and the running clock is in effect right now, 47 to four. Pike County Central leading this one. So Lane will bring the basketball. I'm sorry, that is McCoy with the basketball. Zone defense from the Pike County Central Lady Hawks. Lane's going to attack the baseline. 
Stops the dribble, gets inside the Stanley, couple of dribbles, layup, good, 47-6. Nice looking move there from Staley, I'm sorry, Stanley. Yeah, three now for Stanley tonight. Johnson gets over to Justice, her three-point shot in front of the rim, rebound. Comes out there's Lane, she's gonna push. She's picked up by Caden Hess, back over to Casey. Back to Lane. Zone defense, once again, McCoy's three-point shot up front of the rim. Nice rebound by Justice. She gets over to Johnson, who's going to push. 47-6, Pike County Central. Kaylee McCoy still yet to get on the board. Hess gets it over to Allen. Back to Johnson, her three-point shot. Good, 4-50-6. Dakota Johnson's first point of the night. Comes from a three-pointer. McCoy over to Lane. Swings over to Casey. Her shot's up. Back of the rim. Rebound Taylor. She's had a play. She's played a nice game off the bench. Yeah, she is. Johnson's going to push. Got Allen in the corner. She has the basketball. Swings it back over to Hess. Her shot's up. Front of the rim, no good. Rebound by Casey. Gets it over to McCoy, who's going to push. Casey looks. He'll tell a couple of dribbles back to McCoy. Phelps has done a pretty good job of swinging that ball around the last couple of possessions. Nice hustle by Justin. Ball goes out of bounds. Phelps will retain possession, though. It's number two, Haley Blankenship, will check in for the Phelps Hornets. Number 20, Taylor Wood will check in a freshman for Pike County Central. She'll replace Johnson. Some young players getting some playing time here in the second half for the Lady Hawks. McCoy, Blankenship shots up. Nice rebound by Casey. Her shot doesn't fall. Allen with a block for Pike County Central, and the Phelps will retain possession. Another substitute. That's going to be Norman will check back in. I'll tell you what, the second that... Uh, Alexis Taylor goes to the bench for the Pike Central Lady Hawks. You see Phelps starting to get a few more offensive right. rebounds. Shots up and good from Casey. Push for Pike County Central gets all the way in. It's Hess with push. Shots up and good. Alexis Taylor with another basket. 52 to eight. Drop the basketball out of bounds. Pike County Central will throw the ball in bounds from the sideline. Nine points now for Alexis Taylor for the Lady Hawks. And to Taylor, she's trying to get double figures. Layup doesn't fall. Shots up by Wood, no good. Another shot up by Wood, no good. Hess is so gonna be fouled. This will be on McCoy, I believe. Out of the record team, the Lady Hornets, McCoy, it's her second. Be her second, second. team second. Fox Central will throw the basketball inbounds from the baseline. Taylor's jumping from the baseline, no good. Sir Justice shot at the buzzers, up and good. And after three quarters of play, Pike County Central is leading this one 54 to 8. You're watching 60th District Basketball on the Intermountain Sports Network. I'm Jennifer Reynolds, and I've been a State Farm agent for over 20 years here at Pike. We offer all the products and services available through State Farm Insurance. You'll receive all the benefits of a State Farm agent in a convenient location while being serviced by my licensed staff in a friendly office environment. Call us if you need a quote for auto insurance, fire, life, or health, or if you need information on our financial services product. Our commitment is to you, our clients. Walk in, call in, or click in anytime, day or night. Well, here it is. Brand new floors, brand new fireplace, and brand new stairs. So you want to buy it? Can you believe how quiet it is out here? Her again. Dealing with a child of realtor? Well, it's not about them, it's about you. Make an adult decision and call us. No one sells more real estate than Remax.
Welcome back to Pike County Central High School for 60th District Basketball Action after three quarters of play, 54 to eight, Pike County Central leading this one. We got some more subs just checked in for Pike County Central, number 30, Allie Atkins checked in, 41, Jaden Looney checked in as well. So a lot of young Hawks getting an opportunity to play. Abby May checked return to the line as well for the Lady Hawks. Basketball gets inside the Hess. That's Wood with the basketball. He's done a couple of dribbles. Make it, make it away with Walker. That's Looney. Gets over to Hess. Back to May. Aggressive with the basketball with the left hand. Shots up no good. Rebound by Phelps. That's Stanley who's going to push. Get back over to Lane. To McCoy. Nice bomb of it. Casey. Long two-point shot. They're going to call it a three. Nice. Up and good, 54-11. Yeah, she is not afraid to shoot it. I tell you what, she she doesn't pick up those three early fouls. This may be a little bit different of a ball game. The three, first three-point made basket of the night for the Hornets. That's Atkins with the basketball. Gets over to May. Stolen by Stanley, and she's going to dribble left hand all the way to the basket. Her left hand layup is good. Fundamentally sound, 54-13. Love seeing people go with that left hand and finishing with that left hand. Yeah, and she did a good job keeping control of the basketball all the way into the bucket. Hess over to May, looking man-to-man -man defense from the Hornets. Casey, a draw, a avoid drawing that fifth foul, May with the basket. Nice head fake by Abby May, get to the bucket. McCoy over to Lane, her three-point shot, high arcing shot. Off the backboard, battle for it. It's going to be a jump ball. It'll be over to Pike County Central. I want to thank a couple of our sponsors real quick. Apple Atom Wireless, Jennifer Reynolds State Farm, HPT Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, Pop Chevrolet, Total Pharmacy, and Community Trust Bank, Gerhardt Security, Remax, Frontier Medical Group, Southern Prep, Intermountain Cable, Citizen National Bank of Kentucky, Howard Family Pharmacy, Attorney John Earl Hunt, Overhead Door of Eastern Kentucky, Hush Chevrolet and Pikeville RV appreciate all the sponsors we can bring the action. Casey inside the lane, her jumper's up. No good, but she's going to be fouled. I believe it's going to be a 42 Abby May. Nope, they're going to call it on 41 Jaden Looney. Yeah. Her first team's first. That'll send Lane to the free throw line shooting two shots. Lane hadn't put up a lot of shots. She's been the primary ball handler for most of the night for uh, the Lady Hornets. Not not put up a lot of shots. So. She's just trying to get the offense going for the Lady Hornets. Second free throw is up. Off the back of the rim. Battle for and come away with. That's number 30. It is Atkins for Pike County Central. Gets over to Looney and to Hess. Hess knocks it out of bounds. Be over to Phelps. 56-13. Pike County Central leading this one. I agree with you. I think if Casey doesn't pick up the early fouls, it may be in a different story tonight. Very, uh, very willing shooter she is. Back over to Lane, who drives. Pass inside to Stanley. Her shot's no good. That's Atkins got the basketball. Shots up and good. That's number 20, Haley Wood, a 5'3 freshman. And five more Lady Hawks at the table ready to check in. Everybody McC getting some playing time tonight. McCoy shots up no good. It's battled for. Guys hustle by both teams. And no foul called at the corner. Letting them play. Let them play. Hess over to Atkins. Her three shots no good. Looney shots on rebounds no good. Out of bounds. Pike County Central will retain possession. You have Kennedy Hamilton of seventh grader checking in for the Hawks. Bowman will return for the Hawks. Number 34, Lara Stanley of seventh grader checking in as well. Deep bench for the Lady Hawks. 33 is Hannah Williams, a junior. And Spears return for the Lady Hawks. Spears has got in the corner. His own defense from Phelps. Wraparound pass. Bowman coming with the basketball back to Spears. Baseline jumper shot rattles around. Nice job by the Lady Hawks. They may get Stanley over the back. Over the back. I'm sorry on Stanley. I think for Phelps. It's going to be three on Stanley, I believe. It'll be her third, team's third. 
58-13. Spears gets into Bowman. Back to Spears, swings the basketball. Back outside, shots up off the back of the rim. Rebound there by Stanley from Phelps. We're going to have a jump ball, and it will stay with Pike County Central. Pike County Central just all over the offensive boards tonight. I mean, just controlled both sides, really, but really snack, snatching down some offensive rebounds tonight, getting some second-chance shots. Bowman gets inside the Spears, baseline jumper, corralled by Stanley from Phelps. She's going to push. Finished with the right hand this time, but she's going to be fouled by number four, Kennedy Hamilton, I believe. See, this J.C. Stanley does a pretty good job handling the basketball and getting to the uh, bucket on the fast break. Only an eighth grader as well. Some young talent for these Phelps Lady Hornets. Stanley have two shots. First one rattles around, comes out, 58-13. Has one more. Second shot's up and good. 58-14. Six points now for J.C. Stanley. Kennedy Hamilton will bring the basketball up for the Lady Hawks. Spears in the corner. Back to Hamilton. Swings over to Stanley. Shots up. Rattles around. Battle for Casey comes away with it for Phelps over to Lane. Now she's going to push. Gets all the way to the basket. Right hand layup. No good re Corralled in there by somebody going to have a jump ball violation. Let me start off violation. Just a jump ball call over to say with Phelps. And number 25, Tommy Allen will return. Replace Bowman for the Lady Hawks. 58-14. Anna McCoy, she's going to attack the, the paint over to Stanley. The floater, Casey. Rebound up and good, 58-18. Amelia Casey, 10 points now in double figures. Sorry, 58-16, I'm sorry. Spears over to Allen. Picks up a dribble, back over to Spears. He's going to swing to Hamilton. Stanley over to number 33. Her shot's up and good. That's Hannah Williams, the 5'7 junior. First Rolling. Two. Rolling substitution here. A lot of people just came in there. Wholesale substitution for the Lady Hornets here. I see Bailey Norman come in. I see number two. That's Blankenship checks back in for the Lady Hornets. Number four, we got Kylie McCoy. And we got number 30. Number 30, that is Kyra Stevens. Ball goes out of bounds and come back over to Pike County Central. Closing in a one minute to go here in the fourth period, 60 to 16. Pike County Central in control of this one. Allen's three from the corner, up and good. They're gonna call that a two. She must be on line, 62 to 16. Pass over to Norman. We'll swing the basket around on top. Blankenship, shot crowd by Allen. She gets it out. That's number 34, Lara Stanley's got the basketball. She gets all the way to the basket. Nice pass over to Stanley. Allen, second jumper, zip on the side of the rim, no good. Stolen by Pike County Central. Good nice, pass. nice bounce pass. <laughs> Up and good. Allie Atkins getting her first two. Everybody getting in on the action for the Lady Hawks tonight. 64-16, under 10 seconds to go. Phelps may just run out the clock. No, even one last shot. Rattles around. Three-point basket to count it. That is number four, Tylee McCoy. And Pike County Central will win this one 64-19. It'll advance to the championship game on Thursday night to take on the Belfry Lady Pirates. The game is scheduled to start at 7 p.m. As West gets our final stats there, I'll give you one last time one to our sponsors to say thank you. Appalachian Wireless, Jennifer Reynolds, State Farm, HPT, Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, Pop Chevrolet, 
Total Pharmacy, Community Trust Bank, Gerhardt Security, Security, excuse me, Remax, Frontier Medical Group, Southern Prep, Intermountain Cable, Citizens National Bank of Kentucky, Howard Family Pharmacy, Attorney John Earl Hunt, Overhead Door of Eastern Kentucky, Met Chevrolet and Pikeville RV. Definitely appreciate all of our fine sponsors allowing us to bring tonight's basketball action in the 60th district. So Pike County Central come out and put a early run on the Phelps with a man-to-man full court press defense and turn the basketball, turn the whole Hornets off, turn them, turn them over early and often. Abigail Hess picked up seven steals early and got a lot of easy baskets in West. After that early onslaught, it's 31 nothing after the first period of play. And then Pike County Central didn't turn, they didn't look back. They came out with a 64 19 victory. Yeah, and just huge contributions off the bench from uh, from number 22, Alexis Taylor, for the Lady Hawks. The Lady Hawks really controlled the, the basket. And we talked about this off there. I, I think Amelia Casey going off the floor for the Lady Hornets early on with three early fouls in the technical. We saw her be a huge part of the game in the second half. It was just so out of control by that point. Uh, the Lady Hawks really dominated the glass, out rebounding the uh, Lady Hornets 50 to 25, grabbing 17 offensive rebounds, so plenty of second chance points for the Lady Hawks. They were led in scoring by Hannah May, who almost got all of her points in the first half. 17 points for the game, 14 for Emily Tackett, five for Abigail Hess, 10 steals, nine in the first half. I mean, great game for the young uh, Abigail Hess. Nine points for Alexis Taylor off the bench. And then for the Phelps Lady Hornets, kind of, we, we saw J.C. Stanley kind of get going there in the second half. And Amelia Casey with uh, 10 points led the Lady Hornets in scoring. So uh, this may be a little bit of a different ball game if we see a little bit more of Amelia Casey. And then their leading scorer, who wasn't injured, Kaylee McCoy, zero points for the night. Just a tough night. Really good job by the Pike Central Lady Hawks on the defensive side and just really controlling the tempo of the game and just controlling the game in general on the defense and the offense. Well, I was impressed by the, tonight by the Lady Hawks with a couple of different things. One, they got a lot of people got playing time tonight. Coach Campbell did a good job, get a lot of people's feet on the floor in, in a tournament action and a surviving advanced ball game. So you never can tell down the road when you're going to need that player in this type of atmosphere. But also coming out, they switch up the defense early. You know, whether it be a full court man-to-man -man defense, then they backed it back to a three-quarter, one-three-one type press. And then when they went to the half court defense as well, they started mixing it up between a man-to-man -man defense and also a zone defense as well. Yeah, and that played a huge part in the game, especially in the first half. I mean, we saw them throw these different looks at the uh, Phelps Lady Hornets, and it really threw off what they were able to do on the offensive side of the uh, basketball. So Pike, huge credit to the Pike Central Lady Hawks. Now they're going to have a huge test coming up this Thursday, but they punched their ticket for tonight for the 15th region tournament, but they obviously – on their home court, want to win the district and want to beat the Belfry Lady Pirates this coming Thursday. So stay tuned with us all week here. Wes and I will be here in the Pike County Central uh, Gymnasium bringing 60th District basketball, actually whether it be on the women's side or on the men's side. And tomorrow night we have the Pike County, have the same two teams meeting on the men's side in Pike County Central and Phelps, and it should be a barn burner. Yeah, I mean, looking forward to that so much. Just mountain basketball this time of year it really doesn't get much better than that if you're a sports fan get out to some of these games i mean you're going to see some great basketball on the girls and the boys side and we know just like you said in this game anything can happen turn i would not be surprised at all to see some upsets happen we're going to see some players really make their name some young players come out and make names for themselves and listen there's tons of basketball left on the docket well for a broadcast crew tonight we got david on the switcher over here my partner west Gary Justin signing off. You're watching 60th District Basketball on the Intermountain Sports Network. coverage you need when you need it most. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless.